and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrett. And we've been gone for a few weeks because one, the, there's a week that they don't tape and then you were away and I'm like, oh, the hell with this. And I just replayed the other show. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, I didn't even know. I took another week off. So, Why not? So we well, took... we're back. Here right. we are. Um, I'm exhausted. Yeah, so you we were just, on a big, uh, long trip. So. Got off. Pork Fest, of course, mm-hmm. which is always exhausting. Then we had Fourth of July, and then when I went to Freedom Fest in Memphis, yep, that was uh, a lot. Yep, and then uh, I just said goodbye to some house guests. So just, I am like, I'm ready for some yoga just, and a nap. I'm just honestly. ready for the rain to stop because what is oh going my God, on? I, and the mosquitoes for me, because if I get a mosquito bite, I'm like, I, I think some people are just sensitive because Dan never gets. Mosquito welts. I have like my shoulders looks like something beat me, you know. So actually, when I when my immune system was much more dysregulated, mm-hmm. that was happening to me. Remember how I said I never had allergies, yeah. and then I got that MMR yeah. jab fifteen years ago. And then I got allergies, and now I fixed yeah. it with my diet and everything. For a while, if a, a I mean, bug I'm... bit me, it would actually make one of those yeah. blisters. Yeah, I am. I have always been super, super sensitive to. Bug, to bug bites of all sorts, um, like my whole life. Like if I'm, I got a, if I get a spider bite, I've got the big red block. Uh, so <laughs> I got one of those on my butt gonna, ones. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. And, they're, and they come up almost immediately. So I'm like, there's obviously something either that attracts them or I'm just super sensitive or whatever the case. But I was out trying to reclaim some of the hill because even though it looks pretty being all green back there, you start looking at it and going, I can't even see my flowers right. because everything... Is it's just so overpowered, and every time it rained, and I, I'm out there with the it's, weed it's whacker lush. and the mosquito, the yeah. bugs were insane. So it we, can just stop raining. We though. actually we went on a trail while up at Pork Fest, mm. um, and it was actually the most unpleasant hike I've ever mm. had in New Hampshire, just because of the mosquitoes. I felt like I was in some. Yep like malarial yep. horror movie um, so yeah this rain everything's I mean, rotting I feel, in my garden well that's what i mean it's it's everybody i talk to is like my flowers look like crap i i barely look at the vegetables because they're gonna make me sad so on the plus side yeah i know L- last night actually because my friend stayed over and we were out in the yard and i had planted some cabbage and some yeah. lettuce and my lettuce I is been, like this yeah, tall. Yeah, I haven't been home, yeah. so everything is. So they were like, "Oh, pick that for for our salad for dinner," and I was like, "It's gonna be bitter," and yeah. they're like, "No, it's not." Okay. So I picked some, and I took a bite. I don't know why I did you this. Were like, it no, was a bad this idea. Is not... And then as after I bit it, I saw the white. You know how it gets exactly. that white yeah. bitter like, thing. No. I was like, not even the hypothetical backyard dinosaurs yep. want to eat well, it and, you so know? <laughs> i've seen something else uh, it has nothing to do with manchester other than the fact that it, it's berry season but i've seen this a couple times now and the last time i saw a post about it i was like oh i know why this is coming up so i never really think about it. you know you get the little berries and you pop them you're, okay oh recent years not always so not when we were kids um there's like a worm that gets inside of, so they're saying you shouldn't mm, really, protein. you shouldn't, I mean, yeah, but it's like, it's a, Bill it, Gates approved. Uh. So they say, if you're going to have, if you've got berries growing on your property to soak them in lemon water oh. so that, it, and it pushes the worms out. And I think probably, I saw it. Of course. Now that. I'm like, how many berries, right? how I many like, worms I just, have I eaten in my backyard? Right. I'm Ew. like, yeah. Anyways. Um, <laughs> But, but enough complaining about yeah. the weather. Here's the good news about this amount of rain. First of all, it's an El Nino season, yeah. so this isn't actually that This isn't climate unusual. change. This is a cyclical this thing. This is the actual cyclical thing. Yeah. The bigger thing that's been in my feed for two days is apparently the sun is going totally nuts. Have you heard about this? Mm-hmm. So there are these massive sunspots that are being pushed out that may or may not cause a geomagnetic storm on Earth. And I was like, okay. well, there's another thing we could worry about. Yeah. But what I was going to say with a lot of rain, our ground tables are filling yes. up and that's huge because that means people's wells yeah. are healthy and all of that so it's a it's a crappy year because you got to replenish well, and, and then it'll that be it's better been again so humid and so hot it's just like compounding. it feels like florida yeah. i'm like come on um, man <laughs> yeah. so so i've gone out kayaking twice we got a late start kayaking so we went out kayaking once last week and we went out um i think monday night this week 
And both times I've got video of Bieber slapping his tail. I mean, I'm like, oh, apparently cool. I'm a wildlife photographer now. Oh, that's so awesome. yeah, one was on uh, the lower mass of Beesick, <laughs> which we always go looking for the beaver. Nice. And we didn't think we saw him. And then I saw him swimming across. So I just kind of, you know, creep up on him. And then that's what they do to alert other beaver that you're there. They slap, I mean, in this big splash. Oh, cool. And then we were up on Dube's Pond in Hooksit on Monday. And I'm... You know, there's always beaver. The beaver are very um, agitated since the rains, you can tell. Right. But I see him going across, so I was just, like, coasting and, like, okay, I'll video. Oh, look, he did it, too. Aww. So I'm, now that's going to have to be my thing. Um, <laughs> that's funny because we uh, we were out on the Namaste down in mm. Goffstown or West End, West Arena, and I saw someone who looked exactly like you and Dan in kayaks. This was before Pork Fest. And, and I was walking Aren't with Louie. waving at him? I, I was waving. I was yelling, Tammy, Tammy. And yeah. eventually Louie's goes, like, that's I don't think that's, <laughs> that's Tammy. Awesome. Um, speaking of that, while you were away, so they did find a dead person floating in the lake up there. So I because heard. Because there's like dead people all over the place. And there's shootings and stabbings and all this stuff. And that's going to kind of like... Wrap me into, um, just before I left, I saw this email. Uh, Governor Sununu is not running for re-election. I suspected I suspected it, but he much. did put out a oh, release. It says, after wow. discussions with Valerie and the kids and much consideration, I've decided not to run for another term. Um, not an easy decision. Public service should never be a career. So on and so forth. So I was like, oh, well, that's news. Um, so that, that opens up... Um, that's going to be interesting. Well, because, because there's probably at least three. And I don't know if everybody, I, I, I am 100% confident that Chuck Morse is in the race. Sure. And Kelly Ayotte. Yes. Is in the race, which is weird because Chuck Morse and Kelly Ayotte to me would seem like an alignment. Almost the same. Well, yeah. more like buddy buddy than right. anything. So that's kind of peculiar. I don't. I just saw Frank Edelblue last night at um, an AFP Pints and Policy event, and I don't know if what he'll do. Um, he has obviously a different slice of the GOP than Aya or um, Morse will. It'll be interesting to see who bubbles up in the next week or so. And then, it'll come up quick, I'm sure. And then who's uh, uh, who's on the Dem side? Okay. Joyce, did Joyce okay. declare? Yeah, cause she Kendall, did, okay. right? So th that was part of my notes. So let's put this piece over. <laughs> let's see if we can cross. Look at We can cross out the dead body. <laughs> um, so far, I believe. So, Joyce Craig did announce that um, she made it official, and this just kills me. Just, I'm sorry. What delusional things are these people doing? I'm running to gov for governor to ensure that everyone in New Hampshire has the opportunity to succeed by strengthening our public schools. And I'm going to stop there. So not wanting them to succeed because strengthening the failing public schools should not be the solution to the failing public schools creating good paying jobs okay we have so many good paying jobs in the state already we can't find enough people i mean our hire. unemployment rate is right? 1.8 percent building more affordable housing and protecting access to abortion because that's a big priority for people in new hampshire and she goes through and talks about it as mayor of manchester we're addressing the needs of our community by bringing people together to get results for our residents and grow our city. One, we can't grow our city. So what does that even mean? We've added thousands of new jobs. Okay, we as the government did not add thousands Ooh. of new jobs. And if the government did add thousands of new jobs, we have a bigger problem than we know. Because and, we have bigger government. And hundreds of affordable housing units. And I'm like, okay, whatever. We've decreased class sizes because the student population is plummeting it has nothing to do with organization it has to do with, with the fact that there's thousands reality. fewer kids and covid just made more parents pull their kids increased teacher pay which i don't know we probably increased um administrative pay much faster than we increased teacher pay this is the kicker and reduced violent crime by 38 percent yeah yeah I'd so Anybody out there watching, you tell me that you feel like you're living in a city that the that um, violent crime is dropping. Because literally every day last week, there was either a shooting or a stabbing. Like, literally, people are like, this is an everyday occurrence now. This isn't a random thing. And that was the same week they found the dead person in the masked lake. And I was just like, how? 
Who says these things with the with a straight face? I mean, I don't. I, I, I hope that voters in New Hampshire can understand that whatever Joyce Craig did here in Manchester we is not, not something we want no, to scale, no, scale across up. the state. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, she's been a terrible mayor. Well, you know, I can't, and, like, you know, I can go back and say, everybody can say, well, I could say that about Ted Gatz's. No, te- you know, like, if nothing else, Ted Gatz has expanded the, the, um, voca- the vocational high school and STEM and all that stuff. That's a long-lasting improvement. So what's interesting about the crime rates as well, I read this article uh, over the weekend on the plane actually coming back, where they said there's this interesting thing that happened between, uh, you know how I say government, there's an app for that, by which I mean most of what government does, if it's useful, could actually be replaced by the free market and everyone would be better because we'd create more Mm -hmm. jobs and it'd be cheaper and all of that good stuff. So there are these apps for neighborhoods, right, next door, even Facebook groups and all of that, right? So what happened in the last, I don't know, eight years Mm -hmm. as these things started to spin up is they discovered, and this was about California, but I would assume the same is true here, that the uh, crime statistics being declared by uh, the bureaucrats and (laughs) the actual crime that's happening in next door where everyone can self-report whether their box from Amazon got stolen and whether they have the culprit on a ring camera, i.e. evidence, proof, real crime, real property, really happened. Yep. Or bogus, secret, we're or just going to tell like you, you to stuff. Right. So it turns out those two things are not well, aligned I mean, at, at all. Just looking at what I do see on the Nextdoor app and on Facebook, you do. It's like every day. This isn't just once in a while. Every day, you it seems like I'm reading, besides stabbings and shootings, I mean, last week there was a guy over on um, Goffstown Road, I think, or Front front street somewhere in the neighborhood he was they were trying to get him one night they actually in the article that was like seven pages deep in the union leader they said he wasn't located and he was to be considered armed and dangerous and i'm like so why why and i i always get in the conversation with people about encryption and they're like well we have to protect the police officers i'm like what about protecting the public this is (laughs) you know like what about you gotta ask yourself who's working for who you get i mean You've got stabbings and shootings. You've got people getting their packages stolen, which to some might, that might not be considered a violent crime, but I'm sorry, that's property crime. That is violence. Um, well, breaking it's a real into crime. cars, I mean, breaking into cars and stealing stuff, break people on um, trying to break into people's homes, I read. Um, and then the, you got the panhandling and people, like there's one woman on um, next door talking about how she woke up and there was somebody sleeping in her, her flower bed. And I'm like, yeah, that's not somebody who just stumbled home from the bar and fell over. That is, you know, people don't just sleep in other people's flower beds. And this is a constant, constant growing thing. That, and I've got this on the list too, um, traffic and the lack of people being able to drive. So last (laughs) night, I'm like, I keep saying to Dan, like, we're driving along. And I'm like, you really have to start paying different attention because... Nobody seems to know how to drive. Well, it's uh, I don't know about the driving, which could be a factor, but definitely the pedestrians. Well, I'm like, just look, like... if you're a pedestrian, <laughs> uh, you may have legal right of way. You can't just step You out. can be dead right, right when I drive over you. Right. Because here's the point. Like, you could be like, I'm right. I have the right of way. That is correct. That's true, but I think the But law... I am in a metal yeah. thing going yeah. a certain speed, and you are a human yeah. of flesh. And yeah. if those two things well, meet... And, and that right of way thing, I remember reading years ago, because at Hampton Beach, it is... The pedestrians do have the right of way, but that doesn't give them the right to step out into traffic. That's the difference. You have the right of way at a street corner when there's no traffic if you're crossing somebody has to yield to you that doesn't mean you just get to walk right out but into now traffic. they just do it's kind of like i don't know if it's because they're like oh i have the right away i think they're just idiots doing dumb stuff but i have noticed where you're just driving and you're yep. like what Yo, is or you know <laughs> well and then literally the trap i mean i watch people and i'm like okay i don't know if you none of you took Considering we require you to pay for driver's ed, it's amazing to me how many people can't drive. So last night there was an accident, and I was like, now how the heck, what is that? So you know the 
the stretch of Second Street where you would get on the highway mm -hmm. just before in Queen City. It's been like that intersection hasn't changed in all the time I've lived in New Hampshire. It, it has quirks. It's not dangerous. It just requires you to know how to drive. Right. So if you're going south on Second Street, there's two lanes. One lane is maybe there's even three lanes, but these are the go straight lanes. Like you're going to go to Dairy Queen. This lane is turned to get on the highway. This lane is not turned on Queen City. That is ahead of the intersection. It, uh, it gets backed up there, so it does get I hard. Mean, so, like, so some people will be in the lane to yeah, turn no, onto Queen City. And but they're back I there, and then they all of a sudden go straight, which is not really. But then it's just, so last night there was an accident, and there were two cars smashed into the corner of the Nultz building, like a pickup truck and a car. And I'm what? like, how does that even happen? So from what I can ascertain from Facebook, I think somebody came down Frederick Street, which is one of the little side streets, and was trying to cross over, which isn't allowed. I did come down Frederick Street because I wanted to make sure. There is a sign at the end of Frederick Street that has an arrow going only. That could probably be more clearly defined because technically well, I could... But then they define it with those signs that say wrong way right. that are literally on the cusp of... Yeah, is this the wrong way or the right so way? So I it's think somebody so tried to go across... And somebody coming south let them, and a truck coming north hit them. Ah. So there's a lot of mistakes there, right? But I see it with people, like, people don't seem to know how to yield. People don't, they don't know, like, I mean, in today's paper, there was actually, and it, it makes me sad, first of all, uh, there was a road rage incident oh, yeah. they found where a 23-year-old uh, man has been found guilty yeah. of m murder. murder. Yeah. So Man's it's not manslaughter. Neg homicide. Yeah, negligent, negligent homicide, homicide or something. Uh, because he was in a road rage incident last yep. year where the other person spat in his face and then he shot him. Now, I'm like, <laughs> I don't think those are reasonable right. responses. Right, those are not, exactly. But I will also say I do understand that, you know, dynamics can, can become... Blurry. Uh, blurry or you know people get angry and right. you're irrational or whatever in the heat of the moment but i was like no someone's dead and this guy's life and is this ruined. guy's life's ruined and it's like for traffic right let it like, go i think we are dialed up so and, 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 uh, i mean i get people all the time that are you know you're you're doing normal stuff and they're like ah and you're like I, oh I, man! I'm just I mean, turning, dude. I put my blinker on. I'm turning. Old, 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 angry Carla, not yoga meditative Carla. I, I sometimes would get that like road rage feeling, and uh, a guy cut me off once going to a hospital in Dartmouth in the Upper Valley, and I guess I cut him off actually. To happens. be honest, right? Like I was trying to get into the must turn lane to turn yep. up to the hospital, and that guy followed me all the way right. to the hospital parked behind my car right i was going for like medical tests like yeah. i was not in the zone and followed me all the way into Which the hospital just, just okay. yelling behind yeah. me like a crazy person because and you cut like, him off and then what kills me is dan like we we're doing something the other day we're driving and this guy comes you know they come from the fourth lane and they cut all the way over right. into the first lane and then they cut back and then they're they're in front of you at the red light and you're like so did you just need to be in front at the red light because you're you didn't get any further than I got? So, uh, um, yeah. So everyone should just take a chill mm, pill. Yeah. Uh, more yoga, more meditating, more hydration, more water. Yeah, I, I think like that's a I, big one too. So now back to the mayor stuff, mayor <laughs> anonymous. So, so you got Joyce Craig who thinks she wants so wants to destroy New Hampshire like she destroyed Manchester. And then earlier, um, there was a thing how she endorsed Kevin Kavanaugh because in the mayor's race here in Manchester, it, it appears that there'll be at least four candidates. Um, Democrat, I don't even know if June Trishiani is a Democrat or undeclared, to be honest. I feel like All I don't right. know. Um, on the Democrat side, you have Alderman at large, June Trishiani, Ward 2 Alderman, Will Stewart, um, Ward 1 Alderman, Kevin Kavanaugh, um, and we're, we're joking yesterday that what's his name? Glenn Ouellette gets in every race. So, oh, okay, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, Jay Rue as a Republican. And that's what we have so far. Um, so on the Democrat side, um, you know, that's an interesting three-way split. It'll be interesting to see who bubbles up. But Joyce Craig endorsed Kevin Kavanaugh. And I had to chuckle because, again, thinking about what a disaster Joyce Craig is and the lack of, like, you got to know. You can't be that clueless. 
She is, um, he says, I'm, he's humbled to receive Mayor Craig's endorsement. She's been an exceptional leader for our city, a dear friend, and her support means a great deal to me. I am committed to building on the progress made under her historic leadership and working tirelessly to ensure that Manchester remains a great place to work. Okay, you do not want to continue whatever the nightmare is that Joyce Craig was. Like that is not, if that's your goal, you should be discont You should be just out of the race. <laughs> Kevin Craig is Kevin Joyce Ke Craig wannabe, 100% union. That is exactly what Kevin Craig represents. Te Kevin Kavanaugh. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin Ke Kavanaugh, Kevin Craig, Kevin Kavanaugh, whatever. <laughs> so I say he's a, he's a loser for that. Um, Will Stewart had an op-ed in today's paper about ban the box, which is legislation to say that you can't ask if somebody's been convicted of a criminal offense on an employment application. Now, the argument to ban it is, well, these people deserve an opportunity. Yes, and I think employers give people an opportunity. You're wasting employers' time and resource if they have to wait until the interview process to find out that this person was in jail for, you know, a sex offense and they're going to be working with all teenage girls. It's not okay. We've had numerous people when I was in the legislature come and testify that they do, it, people would just want to know and then they can make a choice from there. It's it's unnecessary government control. Um, and then you have June Trishiani, which I don't know, you know, I don't know what the deal is. Um, I did try to download people who were running, but this report online was from um, Monday night, not last night. So there's, I know there's at least one change. Um, in the Alderman at large, you've got Dan O'Neill wanting to get back in, Joe Lavasser running to keep his seat, and Will Infantine running to take away June Trishiani's seat, because there's an open seat oh, there. Oh, at the at-large. So, yeah. But Will serving currently, is it? No, Will... Joe is. Joe is. Will and Dan, Will has never been an alderman at-large. Dan used to be the alderman at-large, and there'll be an opening oh, for June's seat. Oh, okay. Um, and then school committee at-large is Jim O'Connell and um, Peter Agar we, we have to get ahead of that whole city charter That's thing. That's gone. The uh, alderman, yeah, while you were gone, the okay. alderman voted eight to five to receive and file it. It will not be okay. on the ballot. Because I was like, hmm. No, mm -hmm, so that, mm -hmm. that happened. Um, some So Chris, in Ward 1 alderman, you got Chris Morgan, who runs like the soccer leagues um, running. I believe he's a Republican. Kevin Shepard, who used to run Parks and Rec, is running for oh, alderman. Wow. So I don't know what that's all about. Um... Dan Goonan's running. Are you run? no. no. Dan Goonan's running for alderman in Ward Two. Uh, Pat Long in Ward Three. Christine Fajardo, who's a state rep, if I'm not mistaken, is going to run in Ward Four. And Mark Flanders, who ran. Is this for the race? This is this. This year, is November. November. Mark Flanders so. ran for school board as a Republican a couple times. He's now going to try to take on the alderman seat. Um, there's a four-way race for Ward Five alderman. Uh, Chrissy Cantor doesn't have anybody as of Monday night running against her in Ward 6. Um, Ross Terrio is going to try to move over from the Ward 7 school board to the Ward 7 alderman and interestingly has an opponent named Patrick Long, which is not the same Patrick Long as Ward 3. <laughs> is it, um, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's almost comical, right? It's like just a strange, uh, the... Kelly Thomas in Ward 12 is running for alderman. She was on the school board, I think. Um, that's who Carlos Gonzalez replaced. She was sick and had to resign. She's now running, um, which is funny because now we have Aaron George Kelly running against Kelly Thomas. So people won't be confused about Kelly, that at Kelly, all. Kelly, Kelly, um, Kelly. <laughs> we're going to run out of time in a couple minutes, but in my notes. So there was a girl. Actually, let's not even talk about it. We'll talk about that other thing. I did want to mention some We Heart West stuff. So I was going to say we are paving down the on, patio on the yeah. Parkside Community For Garden. For some reason, the pavers got stolen. Yeah, somebody stole and them and they raised money. money I donated I don't to know, that. So. Um, then you have an event. Louie helped build it. Yes. And we're, we're going this afternoon to finish nice. the rest. It looks so. beautiful. Thank yeah. you to Patrick and Mari for you know stepping up and leading the, leading yep. the project anyways. Um, on August 5th, which will be right around the corner at 10 a.m., um, we Heart West is hosting We Heart Wildflowers Craft and Garden Day at the Parkside Community Garden nice. area. So that's a thing more for families and kids. You know, they're all for families and kids, right. but you know what I mean. And, um, and actually, our wildflowers flowers, came back up this year. It looks beautiful. The cosmos is blooming. Yep. Um, it's... And then on 
September 2nd, which is Labor Day weekend, um, at 2 p.m. is West Manchester Day, okay. which is going to be at the fields at the Piscataqua River Park, nice. which I kind of knew about. But Mari came to the um, Piscataqua River P- Friends of Piscataqua River Park meeting to tell us ahead of time um, so that we can work together. And we were talking about the wildflowers because We Heart West apparently has I a lot. I wish they would do it at Parkside, actually. Just well, because... they're doing the one at Parkside and then right. this one. So they're trying to show more of the... things for in our side area. of the river yeah. um it'll be nice i think it would good if we have it's access just to that, a bathroom and stuff so that's helpful oh i guess there's you a porta potty there um, it's more just that that just feels like sports fields there's just but nothing that, but it shouldn't be just sports fields so let's make it'll be interesting hmm. um and i think it, both events and then i know there's um the rock rim and the day thing the field uh block party but i think that's like september 16th or something oh they're doing that yeah. again andre rosa who's running for alderman in ward 11 signed up yesterday i saw that um is on their board i didn't know he's the contact for the room heights block party I'm like, Hi, I yeah know. i didn't know that but i thought that was a one off because they got federal funds to throw that party well, was what maybe happened they've got it was another, like they might, maybe money. they're doing i don't know um so it's all interesting there's a lot going on but there's in a lot of fun nice things yeah. happening so the we the we Heart mostly West. in west manchester yeah. um the reason I was saying that about the when you said the wildflowers are growing Mari was telling the friends of Piscataqua River Park because we're talking about you know what to do long term um she said you guys have a ton of these seeds and that they could probably share with us as long as we put it on the map that that's where so we're like gonna look at that I think that'll be really nice. I mean, because I might start just seeding them. Well, as that's we what you we were walk, saying. Yeah. Like they, oh, because there are like three new tents. We did put in a report yesterday, but the, like I literally the on the, the uh, yes, it's a, between it's like like near the ice arena, but literally like four tents just on the river, prime yeah. real estate right there. And the reason I noticed was because the dog was eating toilet paper before we even got to no. the tents, no. you know? And I'm just like, come no. on, man. And it, it bothers me because as a taxpayer, we're spending so much money cleaning up all these places and so much money um, answering emergency calls for the same group of people over and over and over and over and over and over and over again that the rest of the community is missing out on stuff. You know, there's probably less work being done in the parks to make it better for kids because we're spending all our money on Narcan, it, it, you know, you know enough. Or, or also like, I mean, you know, highly productive people spend their downtime picking up these people's right. trash. It's just nuts. Uh, I'm like, mm. done. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's all we have for this week. Um, we'll be back next week. Um, l- rain on and off, you know, thunderstorms pretty much any day. I've never had so many thunderstorms in my life. Um, but there, this weekend looks like it's going to be pretty clear, so that'll be nice. Uh, I have the NHLA dinner. The New Hampshire Liberty uh, Alliance has their Liberty dinner this Saturday, and I think Dan and I are going to kayak out in uh, Newcastle. Oh, nice. Yeah, on yeah. Sunday. So Newcastle, nice. which I know because it's it is the place what? in New Hampshire that has no property taxes. Is that possible? Really? It's an island it and there's an no island. school. And I researched it and that is like why all the super rich people Live own there. properties there. Interesting. And I'll also like, look into hmm. that. Yeah. Anyways, that's all we have for this week. We'll be back next week. Um, if you have any good gossip, please, by all means, send it our way. Uh, Manchtalk at gmail.com or ping us on Facebook. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.